Sirach, chapter 23, Septuagint, English translation, Lancelot C. Brinton, translator. O Lord, Father, and Governor of all my whole life, leave me not to their counsels, and let me not fall by them, who will set scourges over my thoughts, and the discipline of wisdom over my heart. That they spare me not for mine ignorances, and it pass me not by my sins, lest mine ignorances increase, and my sins abound to my destruction, and I fall before mine adversaries, and mine enemy rejoice over me whose hope is far from your mercy. O Lord, Father and God of my life, give me not a proud look, but turn away from your servants always a haughty mind. Turn away from me vain hopes and concupiscence, and you shall hold him up that is desirous always to serve you. Let not the greediness of the belly, nor the lust of the flesh take hold of me, and give not over me your servant into an impudent mind. Hear, O you children, the discipline of the mouth. He that keeps it shall never be taken in his lips. The sinner shall be left in his foolishness. Both the evil speaker and the proud shall fall thereby. Accustom not your mouth to swearing, neither use yourself to the naming of the Holy One. Side note, swearing is not about curse words here. It's about making oaths in the name of God. For as a servant that is continually beaten shall not be without a blue mark, so he that swears and names God continually shall not be faultless. A man that uses much swearing shall be filled with iniquity, and the plague shall never depart from his house. If he shall offend, his sin shall be upon him, and if he acknowledge not his sin, he makes a double offense, and if he swear in vain, he shall not be innocent. But his house shall be full of calamities. There is a word that is clothed about with death, God grant that it not be found in the heritage of Jacob, for all such things shall be far from the godly, and they shall not wallow in their sins. Use not your mouth to temperate swearing, for therein is the word of sin. Remember your father and mother when you sit among great men. Be not be forgetful before them. And so you, by your custom, become a fool and wish that you had not been born and curse the day of your nativity. The man that is accustomed to opprobrious words will never be reformed all the days of his life. Two sorts of men multiply sin, and the third will bring wrath. A hot mind is as a burning fire. It will never be quenched till it be consumed. A fornicator in the body of his flesh will never cease till he has kindled the fire. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. He will not leave off till he die. A man that breaks wedlock, saying thus in his heart, Who sees me? I am compassed about with darkness. The walls cover me, and nobody sees me. What need I to fear? The Most High will not remember my sins. Such a man only fears the eyes of men and knows not that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts, he knew all things before ever they were created. So also after they were perfected, he looked upon them all. 
This man shall be punished in the streets of the city, and where he suspects not, he shall be taken. Thus shall it also go with the wife that leaves her husband, and brings in an heir by another. <coughs> For first she has disobeyed the law of the Most High, and secondly she has trespassed against her own husband, and thirdly she has played the whore in adultery, and brought children in by another man. She shall be brought out into the congregation, and inquisition shall be made of her children. Her children shall not take root, and her branches shall bring forth no fruit. She shall leave her memory to be cursed, and her reproach shall not be blotted out. And they that remain shall know that there is nothing better than the fear of the Lord, and that there is nothing sweeter than to take heed to the commandments of the Lord. It is a great glory to follow the Lord and to be received of him his long life. Wisdom shall praise herself and shall glory in the midst of her people. In the congregation of the Most High shall she open her mouth and triumph before his power. I came out of the mouth of the Most High and cover the earth as a cloud. I lived in high places and my throne is in the cloudy pillar. I alone compassed the circuit of heaven and walked in the bottom of the deep, in the waves of the sea and in all the earth and in every people and nation I got a possession. With all these I sought rest and in whose inheritance shall I abide? So the creator of all things gave me a commandment, and he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest, and said, Let your dwelling be in Jacob, and your inheritance in Israel. He created me from the beginning before the world, and I shall never fail. In the holy tabernacle I served before him, and so was I established in Zion. Likewise, in the beloved city he gave me rest, and in Jerusalem was my power. And I took root in an honorable people, even in the portion of the Lord's inheritance. I was exalted like a cedar in Lebanus, Lebanon, and as a cypress tree upon the mountains of Hermon. I was exalted like a palm tree in Engadi, and as a rose plant in Jericho, as a fair olive tree in a pleasant field, and grew up as a plain tree by the water. I gave a sweet smell like cinnamon and as phyllatus, and I yielded a pleasant odor like the best of myrrh, as galbanum and onyx and sweet storax, and as the fume of frankincense in the tabernacle, as the turpentine tree I stretched out my branches, and my branches are the branches of honor and grace. As the vine brought I forth pleasant savor, and my flower are the fruit of honor and riches, I am the mother of fair love, and fear, and knowledge, and holy hope. I therefore bring eternal, being eternal, and given to all my children which are named of him, Come to me, all you that are desirous of me, and fill yourself with my fruits. For my memorial is sweeter than honey, and mine inheritance sweeter than the honeycomb. They that eat me shall yet be hungry, and they that drink me shall yet be thirsty. He that obeys me shall never be confounded, and they that work by me shall not do amiss. All these things are the book of the covenant of the Most High God. Even the law which Moses commanded for a heritage to the congregation of Jacob. Faint not to be strong in the Lord, that he may confirm you. Cleave to him, for the Lord Almighty is God alone. And beside him there is no other Savior. He fills all things with his wisdom. As Pishon and the Tigris 
in the time of its new fruits. He makes the understanding to abound like Euphrates and as Jordan in the time of harvest. He makes the doctrine of knowledge appear as the light and as Gion in the time of vintage. The first man knew her not perfectly. No more shall the last find her out. For her thoughts are more than the sea and her counsels profounder than the great deep. I also came out as a brook from the river and as a conduit into a garden. I said I will water my best garden and will water abundantly my garden bed. And behold, my brook became a river and my river became a sea. I will yet make doctrine to shine as in the morning and I will send forth the light afar off. I will yet pour out doctrine as a prophecy and leave it to all ages forever. Behold, that I have not labored for myself only, but for all of them that seek wisdom. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. The unity of the brethren, the love of neighbors, and a man and his wife that agree together. Three sorts of soul, three sorts of men my soul hates, and I am greatly offended at their life. A poor man that is proud, a rich man that is a liar, and a dull adulterer that dotes. If you have gathered nothing in your youth, how can you find anything in your age? Oh, how comely a thing is judgment for gray hairs and for ancient men to know counsel. Oh, how comely is the wisdom of old men and understanding and counsel to men of honor. Much experience is the crown of old men and the fear of God is their glory. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy and the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that has joy of his children and he that lives to see the fall of his enemy. Well is him that dwells with a wife of understanding and that has not slipped with his tongue and that has not served man more unworthy than himself. Well in him that has found prudence and that he speaks in the ears of them that will hear. Oh, how great is he that finds wisdom Yet is there none above him that fears the Lord. But the love of the Lord passes all things for illumination, and he that holds it whereto shall he be likened. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of his love, and faith is the beginning of cleaving to him. Give me any plague but the plague of the heart, and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman and any affliction but the affliction from their hate that hate me, and any revenge but the revenge of enemies. There is no head above the head of a serpent, and there is no wrath above the wrath of an enemy. I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. The wickedness of a woman changes her face and darkness her countenance like sackcloth. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors, and when he hears it shall sigh bitterly. All wickedness is but little compared to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of the sinner fall upon her, as the climbing up of a sandy way is to the feet of the aged. So is a wife full of words to a quiet man. Stumble not as the beauty of a woman, and desire not her for pleasure. A woman woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. A wicked woman abates the courage, makes heavy the countenance, and a wounded heart. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress makes weak hands and feeble knees. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. Give the water no passage, neither a wicked woman liberty to go abroad. If she go not as you would have her, cut her off from your flesh and give her a bill of divorce and let her go. 
Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife, for the number of his days shall be double. A virtuous woman rejoices her husband, and he shall fulfill, fulfill the years of his life in peace. A good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. Whether a man be rich or poor, if he have a good heart toward the Lord, he shall at all times rejoice with a cheerful countenance. There be three things that my heart fears, and for the fourth I was sore afraid. The slander of a city, the gathering together of an unruly multitude, and a false accusation. All these are worse than death. But a grief of heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman, and a scourge of the tongue which communicates with all. That sidebar is gossip. An evil wife is a yoke shaken to and fro. He that has hold of her is as though he held a scorpion. A drunken woman in a gadder abroad causes great anger, and she will not cover her own shame. The whoredom of a woman may be known to her in her haughty looks and eyelids. If your daughter be shameless, keep her in strictly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. Watch over an impudent eye, and marvel not if she trespass against you. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he has found a fountain, and drink of every water near her. By every hedge will she sit down, and open her quiver against every arrow. The grace of a wife delights her husband, and her discretion will fatten his bones. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord, and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. A shamefaced and faithful woman is a double grace, and her, and her continent mind cannot be valued. As the sun when it rises in the high heavens, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. As the clear light is upon the holy candlesticks, so is the beauty of the face in ripe age. As the golden pillars are upon the sockets of silver, so are the fair feet with constant heart. My son, keep the flower of your age sound, and give not your strength to strangers. When you have gotten a fruitful possession, through all the field, sow it with your own seed, trusting in the goodness of your stock. So your race, which you shall, which you leave, shall be magnified, having the confidence of their good descent. A harlot shall be accounted as spittle, but a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. A wicked woman is given the portion to a wicked man. But a godly woman is given to him that fears the Lord. A dishonest woman scorns shame, but an honest woman will reverence her husband. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, but she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. A woman that honors her husband shall be judged wise of all, but she that dishonors him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. A loud crying woman in the scold that is sought out to drive away the enemies. There be two things that grieve my heart, and the third makes me angry. A man of war that suffers poverty, and men of understanding that are not set by, and one that returns from righteousness to sin. The Lord prepares such a one for the sword. A merchant shall hardly keep himself from doing wrong, and a huckster shall not be freed from sin. Many have sinned for small matter, and he that seeks for abundance will turn his eyes away. As a nail sticks fast between the joinings of the stones, so does sin stick close between buying and selling. Unless a man hold himself diligently in the fear of the Lord, his house shall soon be overthrown. 
as when one sifts with a sieve. The refuse remains, so the filth of a man in his talk. The furnace proves the potter's vessels, so the trial of a man is in his reasoning. The fruit declares, if the tree have been dressed, so is the utterance of conceit in the heart of man. Praise no man before your heart, before you hear him speak. For this is the trial of men. If you follow righteousness, you shall obtain her, and put her on as a glorious long robe. The birds will resort to their like, and so will truth return to them that practice in her. As the lion lies in wait for the prey, so sin for them that work iniquity. The discourse of a godly man is always with wisdom, but a fool changes as the moon. If you be among the indiscreet, observe the time, but be continually among men of understanding. The discourse of fools is irksome, and their sport is the wantonness of sin. The talk of him that swears much makes the hair stand upright and their brawls make one to stop his ears. The strife of the proud is bloodshedding, and their revelings are grievous to the ear. Whoso discovers secrets loses his credit and shall never find friend to his mind. Love your friend and be faithful to him, but if you betray his secrets, follow no more after him. For as a man has destroyed his enemy, so have you lost the love of your neighbor. As one lets a bird go out of the hand, so have you let your neighbor go, and shall not get him again. Follow after him no more, for he is too far off. He is as doe escaped out of the snare. As for a wound, it may be bound up, and after reviling there may be reconcilement. But he that betrays secrets is without hope. He that winks with the eyes and works evil. And he that knows him will depart from him. When you are present, he will speak sweetly and will admire your words. But at the last, he will writhe his mouth and slander your sayings. I have hated many things, <clears throat> but nothing like him. For the Lord will hate him. Whoso casts a stone on high, casts it out of his own head, onto his own head, and a deceitful stroke shall make wounds. Whoso digs a pit shall fall therein, and he that sets a trap shall be taken therein. He that works mischief shall fall upon him, and he shall not know whence it comes. Mockery and reproach are from the proud, but vengeance as a lion shall lie and wait for them. They rejoice at the fall of the righteous, shall be taken in the snare, and anguish shall consume them before they die. Malice and wrath, even these are abominations, and the sinful man shall have them both. He that revenges shall find vengeance from the Lord and he will surely sleep his sins in remembrance. Forgive your neighbor the hurt that he has done to you, so shall your sins also be forgiven when you pray. One man bears hatred against another, and does he seek pardon from the Lord? He shows no mercy to a man which is like himself, and does he ask forgiveness of his own sins? If he that is but flesh nourish hatred, who will entreat for pardon for his sins? Remember your end, and let enmity cease. Remember corruption and death, and abide in the commandments. Remember the commandments, and bear no malice to your neighbor. Remember the covenant of the highest, and wink at ignorance. Abstains from strife, and you shall diminish your sins. For a furious man will kindle strife, and a sinful man disquiets friends, and makes debate among them that it be at peace. As the matter of the fire is, so it burns, 
And as a man's strength is, so is his wrath. According to his riches, his anger rises. And the stronger they are which contend, the more they will be inflamed. A hasty contention kindles a fire, and a hasty fighting sheds blood. If you blow the spark, it shall burn. If you spit on it, it shall be quenched. And both these come out of your mouth. Curse the whisperer and double-tongued, for such have destroyed many that were at peace. A backbiting tongue, gossip and slander, has disquieted many and driven them from nation to nation. Strong cities has it pulled down and overthrown the houses of great men. A backbiting tongue has cast out virtuous women and deprived them of their labors. Whoso hearkens to it shall never find rest and never dwell quietly. The stroke of the whip makes marks in the flesh, but the stroke of the tongue breaks the bones. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword, but not so many as have fallen by the tongue. Well is he that is defined and defended through the venom thereof, who has not drawn the yoke thereof, nor has been bound by her hands. For the yoke thereof is the yoke of iron, and the bands there are, are of brass. The death thereof is an evil death. The grave were better than it. It shall not have rule over them that fear God, neither shall they be burned with the flame thereof. Such as forsake the law shall fall into it, and it shall burn in them and not be quenched and it shall be sent upon them as a lion, and devour them as a leopard. Look that you hedge your possession about with thorns, and bind up your silver and gold, and weigh your words in a balance, and make a door and bar for your mouth. Beware, you slide not by it, lest you fall before him that lies in wait. He that is merciful, will lend to his neighbor, and he that strengthens his hands keeps the commandments. Lend to your neighbor in the time of his need and pay you your neighbor against in due season. Keep your word and deal faithfully with him, and you shall always find the thing that is necessary for you. Many, when a thing was lent to him, reckoned it to be found and put them to trouble that helped them. Till he has received, he will kiss a man's hand and for his neighbor's money he will speak submissively, but when he should repay, he will pro prolong the time and return words of grief and complain of the time. If he prevail, he shall hardly re receive the half, and he will count it as if he had found it not. He has deprived him of his money, and he has gotten him an enemy without cause. He pays him with cursings and railings, and for honor he will pay him disgrace. Many therefore have refused to lend for other men's ill dealings, fearing to be defrauded. Yet have you patience with a man in poor estate, and delay not to show him mercy. Help the poor for the commandment's sake, and turn him not away because of his poverty. Lose your money for your brother and your friend, and let it not rust under a stone to be lost. Lay up your treasures according to the commandments of the Most High, and it shall bring you more profit than gold. Shut up alms in your storehouses, and it shall deliver you from all affliction. It shall fight for you against your enemies better than a mighty shield and strong spear. An honest man is surety for his neighbor, but he that is impudent will forsake him. Forget not the friendship of your surety, for he has given his life for you. A sinner will overthrow the good estate of his surety. And he that hate, and he that is of an unthankful mind will leave him in danger that delivered him. 
surety ship has undone many a good estate and shaken them as a wave of the sea. Mighty men has it driven from their houses, so that they wandered among the strange nations. A wicked man transgressing the commandment of the Lord shall fall into surety ship, and he that undertakes and follows other men's businesses for gain shall fall into suits. Help your neighbor according to your power, and beware that you yourself fall not into the same. The chief thing for life is water and bread and clothing and a house to cover shame. Better is the life of a poor man in the mean cottage than delicate fare in another man's house. Be it little or much, hold you contented that you hear not the reproach of your house. For it is a miserable life to go from house to house, for where you are a stranger, you dare not open your mouth. You shall entertain and feast and have no thanks. Moreover, you shall hear bitter words. Come, you stranger, and furnish a table, and feed me of that you have ready. Give place, you stranger, to an honorable man. For my brother comes to be lodged, and I have need of my house. These things are grievous to a man of understanding, and the upbraiding of house room, and reproaching of the lender. He that loves his son causes him often to feel the rod, that he may have joy in him in the end. He that chastises his son shall have joy in him, and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. He that teaches his son grieves the enemy, and before his friends he shall rejoice of him. Though his father die, yet he is though he were not dead, for he has left one behind him that is like himself. While he lived he saw and rejoiced in him, and when he died he was not sorrowful. He left behind him an avenger against his enemies, and one that shall requite kindness to his friends. He that makes too much of his son shall bind up his wounds and his bowels with the trouble at every cry. A horse not broken becomes headstrong and a child left to himself will be willful. Cocker your child and he shall make you afraid. Play with him and he will bring you to heaviness. Laugh not with him lest you have sorrow with him and lest you gnash your teeth in the end. Give him no liberty in his youth, and wink not at his follies. Bow down his neck while he is young, and beat him on the sides while he is a child, lest he wax stubborn and be disobedient to you, and so bring sorrow to your heart. Chastise your son and hold him to labor, lest his lewd behavior be an offense to you. Better is the poor being sound and strong of constitution than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. Health and good estate of body are above all gold, and a strong body above infinite wealth. There is no riches above a sound body, and no joy above the joy of a heart. Death is better than the bitter life or continual sickness. Delicacies poured upon a mouth shut up are as messes of meat set upon a grave. What good does the offering to an idol? For neither can it eat nor smell. So he is that he is persecuted of the Lord. He sees with his eyes and groans as a eunuch that embraces a virgin and sighs. Give not over to your mind to heaviness and afflict not yourself in your own counsel. The gladness of the heart is the life of a man and the joyfulness of a man prolongs his days. Love your own soul and comfort your heart. Remove sorrow far from you, for sorrow has killed many, and there is no profit therein. Envy and wrath shorten the life, and carefulness brings age before the time. A cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. Sirac, Septuagint, 23 through 30.